Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and once upon a time, Blender had a game engine, and once upon a different time, Blender killed off that game engine. You see, back about five years ago, uh, Blender ripped the game engine out. I think this was Blender 2.8, where it was officially removed from the Blender project, but the good news is, it lives on. There is a project out there called UPBGE, it doesn't really mean anything, Ukrania or something like that, Blender game engine, uh, but this is a kind of a continuation of the Blender game engine code, uh, and they've been updating it all along. So Blender 3.6 was just released, and they just released UPGE.36. So they're actually keeping the naming convention compatible now too, which is actually pretty cool. So without further ado, let us jump in and take a look at the engine in action. This is it. As you can see, even from the splash screen, this looks exactly like Blender, because frankly, it is Blender. This is a port of Blender 0.36 with the game engine stuff added back in. So this is the splash screen. For or 0 0.36. Again, I do like that uh, versioning lineup between the two. And let's do a very, very simple look at how this functionality works. Now, the cool thing about having your game engine built in with your content creation tool is there's no roundabout. So if something looks right in Blender, it will look right in your game because it is directly inside of the engine you are working with. So there's no exporting. There's no process like that. Everything just works. Basically, you add the logic to your game world. So you pick an entity in your world that you want to control, and then you add logic. Logic is controlled via Logic Bricks Editor, this guy right here. And what we're going to do, so you see we got desk 0 0.01 selected, uh, sorry, 0 0.01 selected, and uh, we're going to go ahead and add a sensor. This is uh, input, something that happened in the world, things like uh, radar touch, ray hit, or uh, in this case, what we're going to do is a keyboard hit. Uh, you could also do messages where something could send a message to something else to cause an event to happen, but basically this is the thing that kicks off stuff in the world. So we're going to do a keyboard event right here, and then we're going to do on the keyboard press of key one, and now we're actually going to have to do something with it. Well, you've got logic controllers here. These are going to be created automatically for us, but then you can do like and or not and so on, or we get you straight out have a Python um, uh, evaluation in there determining if this thing happens or not. And then if the controller controls it, says, yep, this is happening, then the actuator kicks in. So you can almost think of this as like a uh, verb and noun. Oh, so now nah, nah, that, that analogy doesn't really work. You can just think of it as however the hell you want. So what we're going to do here is add an actuator. So we're going to do something really simple here. We're just going to toggle visibility. So you come down here, you can see visibility like so. But as you see, you've got a number of other options here. You could do on motion, move things around, constrain things. You've got physics built in. That's a cool thing about UPBGE. They've got full bullet physics integration into the Blender game engine. They've got their own audio system built in there as well. So uh, there is a ton of functionality here. So what we can do basically is here with the desk, when someone hits a keyboard key, they hit key one. We can do modifiers and all the other jazz there as well. So if we want to do control plus key one or whatever, and then we just link one to the other. This will automatically create our controller right here. Uh, and this is pretty much just it. it, it just do it. Uh, so what we do here now is if we hit the one key, we will toggle the visibility. Now the question is, how do you actually use this? Well, in order to do so, what you do is just highlight your, uh, your viewport window somewhere here and press P. Now we're in play mode. So if I hit the one key, uh, like so, nothing will happen because I actually have it toggled to show visible. All right, let's do that again. Hit the P key. We are now running our game. I hit the one key and our desk disappears. Hit the escape and then we leave our game state and off and running. Uh, you'll notice here also you've got things like there's this control over here. Uh, so you can also add custom components of type uh, Python. So if you create your own stuff using Python, uh, you can do it that way. You can also add a variety of game properties to things like Boolean strings and floats and so on. These are basically your member variables at this point in time or I think over here you can do them at a more global level, but you can apply variables to things and you can set those values using these controllers as well. So that is kind of the simple point of how this all works. And the cool thing here is because it's now Blender 3.6, you're also getting all the Blender 3.6 functionality in here as well. So I don't know how well simulation nodes would actually mesh with UPPGE, but one of the new cool features of Blender uh, 3.6 was the addition of real-time viewport compositing. So if you think about it, if you can show it in your viewport, you can show it in your game. So that works, we can come up here and we can turn it on to always. So now we've got viewport compositing on. This is actually a pretty cool new feature. This used to only be like a post rendering, but now you can actually do it in semi real time. So come up here to the compositor and you see here we've got simple compositing effect going on. So uh, there's box sharpening and there's this glare going on over here. 
and we can change you know the glare values or whatever so now you've got this ability to do this real-time compositing effects in your game so that's the cool thing with UPBGE as Blender gets new features and functionality like when it got the UV render uh, sorry the uh, EV rendering uh, there's a huge step forward for UPBGE as a result because it gets this new fast real-time viewport technology well now it's got this viewport compositing because of the release of uh, 3.6 which is really quite cool by the way, I'll show you where you can go ahead and grab the scene if you want to go ahead and check it out yourself. This is not a, a UPBGE scene. This is just a Blender demo scene. So let's go look at some of the details here. So again, if you want to go ahead and check this guy out, it is available at upbge.org. Uh, and in terms of how it works, basically, you, you model your stuff, you create your materials, you place your assets. Ironically enough, they're using the same scene I did here. You animate everything. You do your logic uh, in your game. This is actually showing... Um, scene graph here uh, and then you release your game when you're done in terms of features and functionality uh, again it's directly integrated into blender uh, and all the advantages that has uh, it has the full support of the real-time viewport rendering ev which again was a big step forward for this guy so you're getting fast viewport rendering uh, you do have the uh, scripting language so you can use the python scripting language uh, so complete API that you can work with there on top of there's the logic brick system which I showed you earlier on this was the original system that was in play for the blender game engine when it came about there's also the logic node system is a visual scripting system designed on top of UPBGE node interface to create gameplay elements inside of the editor main advantage of very versatile and easy to use no programming knowledge is required and of course you can create your own components in Python and integrate them with those other two systems as well uh, full support for animation system again they imp implement the bullet physics engine directly directly inside of Python. So it supports rigid bodies, um, soft bodies, static objects, kinematic character controllers, and so on. Uh, this is the new big thing in the 0.36 release is you now have open XR VR support. So if you want to make a VR style game, you can do so now using open XR. Uh, you've got, again, the editor is available. It's basically a port of Blender. So it's available on every platform that Blender is on and it's quite small. It's like 200 megabytes in size. Uh, there is a navigation system in there for you know doing nav meshes, navigation around the world, AI, that kind of stuff. There is an audio system called Auto Space Library that has been integrated into uh, Blender, which is necessary because Blender doesn't have any concept of sound built in any longer. Uh, and it can support for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. This is the biggest problem with UPBGE, in my opinion. There's a lack of mobile support, lack of console support, lack of web support. So it is a desktop-only game engine at this point in time, which is a little unfortunate. So again, uh, 0.36 was released on the weekend. There was a bunch of game engines released on this weekend. So I'm doing a bit of catch up right now. Uh, there's Here are kind of more of the details of what was in this particular release. The biggest thing, obviously, is that they moved from the Blender 3 to 3.6, which is a huge jump forward. And you get all the features and functionality that you got from that upgrade. Uh, they also added in a new online add-on to make multiplayer creation earlier. Uh, another of other options in here. There's a new video player, etc. Uh, I will have the full release notes linked down below. So if you want to get into the details of what is new in this release, uh, there is a bunch of uh, stuff in here. So video playback and video capture uh, added in and so on. And then on top of that, if you want to check out the scene that I was using in this example, it is the cube diorama. This is available from blender.org. Just head on over to the downloads, demo files, and you'll find it right there. Also, if you're interested, this is all built on top of Blender 3.6, which was released back the end of June. So all of the new features and functionality from, uh, I guess it went from Blender 3 to Blender 3.6. So all that new stuff that was released in the last, you know, four or five versions of Blender, uh, we're all added in this release as well. So you're getting a bunch of neat new stuff here, uh, including, of course, simulation notes, viewport compositing, uh, the improved uh, 3DS file format is back as a plugin, uh, and then uh, some improvements to UV unwrapping, etc. that were all part of Blender 3.6. So if you missed out on the 3.6 release, I will have my link down below. So if you want to check out that video, I think I covered the top five or six coolest features in Blender 3.6 in that video. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the spiritual successor to the Blender game engine. It's not quite so dead after all it actually seems to be doing quite well and if you want to learn more about it just head on over to upbge.org and you can download it right there so again available for uh, windows linux and mac os and the uh, newest version brings it up to date with blender project itself which is quite cool on its own so let me know what you think of upbge of blender game development and more in the comments down below and i'll talk to you all later goodbye